Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to the Encouraging Word broadcast. And tonight we're going to be taking a look at Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. But before we do that, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for this evening. We thank you and praise you for all the blessings of this new year that you have been blessing us with, Lord. And we do thank you. We thank you for life today and we thank you for your word today. We thank you for salvation in Christ, and we thank you for how you care so much for your people. Lord, I pray that tonight you would touch any that are sick and afflicted, any that are that are bowed down with the burdens of life. Lord, I pray that you would lift them up and strengthen them tonight, that you would heal those. Lord, set them free, Lord God. And we do thank you and praise you. We ask for your wisdom and understanding, Lord, of your word tonight. Lord, give us that to, that we may uh, be able to walk through this life in victory with you. And God, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, tonight we're coming from Proverbs chapter 2. So let's take a look at that. It's uh, really exciting. Proverbs chapter 2, looking at verses 1 through 9. And I'll go ahead and read those. Read and you read along with me. Amen. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. You see, God, God's word is so amazing. I mean, tonight, you know, he's, he's giving you a, a really good understanding about what you need to do in your life and your walk and your relationship with him so let's let's take a look going back to verse one it says my son if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee see the first two clues that we have here is receiving god's words and hiding his commands with us if you remember let's go to john chapter 12 john chapter 12 in verses 47 and 48, see the Lord talking here. And what does he say? He says here, he says, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. You see, you know, he's talking here about his word. And he says, if any man hear his words and believe not, he judges them not. Because he didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. And that's what Jesus came to do, is to save the world. He said, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words has one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken. So the word of God is the measure, the standard by which God holds us. And so it is Christ gave the word of God. This is showing that he wants all men to be saved you know he wants people to come to faith and trust in jesus christ he wants us to to uh, remember what he has done here you know and what happens if men reject him well they're rejecting not he says he that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him the word that i've spoken the same will judge him in the last day so the word of god is the standard it is what will be judged by so it's very important for us to remember if, if this is what we're going to be judged by, if this is the standard that God has established for us, then we need to know what it says. Amen. I mean, you know, you when you began to drive your car, you had to get instruction in, into what, you know, what the rules were, what the, the laws were for the to drive in whatever state you're in or country that you're in. You, you There's laws and there's guidance and rules and you have to drive that way. If you don't drive that way, then, uh, well, one, you could get a ticket. You know, you could be paying some money on that. But more importantly, 
if you don't obey those traffic laws, you could get into a terrible accident. You could cause a terrible accident. And uh, that would be very dangerous in a bad situation because you ignore those, those laws. Um, if, you, if you didn't uh, adhere to those things, it could be quite dangerous to you. And what God is giving us is even more important than that. That's the most important thing that there ever will be. God is saying that he is going to judge us by the word that Jesus Christ has spoken. That word. That word is what will judge us. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 35, let's go to Matthew 24, 35. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So his word, he's saying heaven and earth, they're going to pass away, but my words, they're not going to pass away. The, his word endures forever. His word is eternal. See, we know that Jesus, you know, ha, is going to remake the heavens and the earth. We know that. His word is, is forever. He created everything by his word. In the beginning, God said, right? So God spoke it into existence. He spoke all creation into existence. And here, you know, God is giving us the standard. He's saying, if you will... Remember what we're looking at, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. You know, in Psalm 119, and you go to Psalm 119, verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, again, hiding the word of God in our hearts remembering what Christ has said, obeying his word, what he has directed, what he has commanded us to do. Those are important things. This is why it's you and me. We need to be students of the word of God. We need to be getting into the Bible and reading it for ourselves and finding out what God says. This is a responsibility for every Christian, not just the pastors or those in ministry. This is for every Christian to get into the Bible for themselves, to spend time with the Lord and hide that word in their hearts so they don't sin against God. It's very important for us to do. And it's one of those things that we can't just push that off. And it's not enough, guys. It's not enough to read a book about what somebody else is saying about the Word of God. You need to read the Word of God yourself. Cut out the cut out those, those other things and get into the Bible and find out what God says. And it's amazing when you get into the Bible how God will really open the Word to you. Now let's go back over to Proverbs chapter 2. Let's go back over there. Okay, so verse 2. He says, now remember verse 1. So, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thy, thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. So you're, you are, what are you doing? Inclining your ear. You're listening. Remember Jesus says, he that has ears, let him hear. Right? So we need to hear what God is saying. And apply our hearts to understanding. So this is something that we are saying, Lord, I am I am committed to doing. I am going, I'm I'm applying myself to do this, to understand your word, to to really grasp it. Some people say, Oh, it's the Bible is so hard to understand. Well, have you prayed? Have you spent time in, in the word? Or how are you reading? Are you are you just jumping around from place to place? Are you just throwing your Bible open and pointing to a scripture and reading that as your scripture of the day. Listen, don't do that, okay? Don't do that. You need to get into the Bible and read it consistently. Have a have a, a plan of, you know, how you're going to read the word. And listen, don't neglect to read the Old Testament. I'm saying you got to read the whole Bible. Yes, as Christians, the New Testament, we're under the New Testament, but you can't you can't understand what's happening in the New Testament if you don't understand what happened in the Old Testament. So you got to read it all. The whole Word of God, the whole counsel of God is given to us. The Bible, the whole thing. It's all God's Word. It's all important, and it, it is all definitely what you need to be reading. So come up with a plan. Come up with a reading plan and say, this is how I'm going to do it. For This works for me. What one plan might work for one person, it may not work for someone else. So you come up with a plan that between you and the Lord about how you're going to get a hold and, and start reading through his word this year. You know, start reading through. Some people say, well, I want to read through the whole Bible in a year. Praise the Lord for that. You know, I thank God for that. I know people, you know, uh, 
they read through the Bible more than one time in a year. I, if you get into the Bible and read it consistently daily, uh, you'll find that you won't want to put it down. You're going to be excited. You're going to be looking forward to your time getting in the Word. Now, listen, I know that some of you are busy. Maybe some of you uh, still are commute and drive. I, maybe you do. Or maybe, uh, you know, you, you have things going on in your life. Listen, instead of turning on music, right? Instead of popping that music player on, man, put on an audio Bible. Listen to that. Listen to the Word. Just let that Word of God play and listen to it as you're doing whatever you do. Maybe you're cleaning your house. You can you can put the Bible on and, and listen to the Word of God as it, as it plays and, and get this Word of God in your heart. You know, get it in your heart. Be consistent, though, in whatever you do. And then um, verse 3 says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as treasures. You know, this is talking about, you know, you know, really looking to God's word with, with just a, almost a desperation. I, I've got to understand his word. I've got to understand what he's saying. I, I want to dig into his word. You know, this searching and this looking, crying after knowledge and lifting up your voice for understanding, you know, praying to God and then seeking her as silver and searching for his hid treasures. You know, I thought about how people back, uh, I don't know, 1800s, you know, the, the, the gold rush was on in California and in, in, you know, in some of these places and people got what they call gold fever. Like they, they just, man, all they could do is, is go, you know, they, they didn't, sometimes they didn't have a great plan. They just, they just had to go look for gold, you know, but how many people have that hunger, that desire to go look for God? You know, like that is the most important thing in your life. If you can't, if you can't look for God, you don't know what you're going to do because you've got to find God. You gotta, you gotta find his will. You gotta find his word. I mean, you know, do you, do you look and search and seek after his understanding and his word like that? Or, or is it he just, you know, something that you add to your day? Are you excited about your relationship with the Lord? Are you, are you desperate to understand more about God? Are you desperate to hide his word in your heart that you don't sin against him, to live for him with all of your being? Is he the all in all of your life? Because if he's everything to you, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, if you love him like that, you'll search for him. You'll seek him out in his word. Amen. You have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Man, I'm telling you right now, you can know more about him each and every day as you get into his word. You find out what he has to say. You let him direct and guide your steps. As you go through life, you can go through with victory. You see here, he says, um, if, you, if you seek as her as silver and searches for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You know Proverbs 8:17. Take a look at Proverbs 8:17. What he says there, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. How about that? How about that? A promise. Do you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind and strength? He says I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. A promise. Remember, Jesus said, seek and you shall find. Knock, the door will be open. Ask and you will receive. You see, he's, this, is, this is fantastic. Job chapter 28. If you go to Job chapter 28, take a look at this. Job 28, 28. Here it is. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. You see, God gives you his word. He wants you to depart from evil. How do you know what's evil? God tells you what's evil in his word. He describes it. He points it out to you. You will know what things don't please God, and you can avoid those things. You can have a relationship with the Lord, one that pleases the Lord, a walk that pleases. I'm not saying that you'll be a perfect in your walk. You know, we're all 
we all still are in this flesh. We contend with this flesh. We contend with the world system. We contend with Satan. Well, I understand all that, but God has made a provision in his word that if you do sin, you can, you can go to him. You can confess that sin to him, and he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He doesn't want you to live that way, though. He wants you to live in victory. He wants you to live a life that's pleasing to him. Hide his word in your heart, and you can live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord. Yes, you might mess up along the way, but you know, you might fall down in the mud outside in, in front of your house today. It's really raining out here. You might walk out the door and fall right into the mud, but guess what? You're not going to set up camp and live in that mud. You're going to get up. You're going to clean yourself off. You maybe go take a shower, change your clothes, you know, and then you're not going to go jump right back out into it. You know, amen. This is what he's talking about staying out of sin you know if you do sin man get to the lord repent he'll cleanse you he will wash you you will be and you'll be clean and then don't go back to it stay out of that mud puddle you don't need it amen praise the lord god is good amen well we got a couple more verses we get to look at just real quickly um going back to proverbs chapter 2 verse 6 it says for the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You can't have knowledge and understanding the way that you need to have it outside of the Lord. He gives you knowledge and understanding. This is how come you can look and say, that's not right. Because why? It's not your opinion of it's not right. It's what God says. If God says something's not right, it's not right no matter what man says about it. Amen. So we we yield to the Lord. We we understand that he knows better than we do. He is a lot wiser than we are. He is a lot smarter than we are. He has the knowledge to create everything with his spoken word. He created everything down to the minute cells of your body that that produce, you know, functions that allow you to live. I mean, he, he is so amazing that, you know, he created um everything everything so yeah he knows a lot more than you and i man we we have a hard time we don't you know <laughs> we have a hard time creating dinner sometimes you know what i'm saying <laughs> we and we have all the materials we just don't know what to do with them sometimes oh praise the lord verse seven he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly so you walk uprightly he is a buckler that's a shield He's a shield to you. He'll protect you. He'll keep you safe. Walk uprightly. Walk with him. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the ways of his saints. So he keeps your way. He keeps your path. You know, remember the Bible says to lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He directs your path. Praise be to God. Thou then thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. You want to know what's pleasing in the eyes of the Lord? Get into his word. Hide it in your heart. Get in there daily. Make it a commitment this year. I'm going to get in his word every day. God bless you. I pray that you were encouraged tonight. This is Encouraging Word Broadcast. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Now, if you're going to join us with Sunday School, it'll be 9.30 with uh, Pastor Brian and, and 10.30 with our regular service. And also, don't forget, it's Communion Sunday, First Communion of 2021 so make sure you have your juice and your crackers and we'll see you tomorrow morning at uh hopefully you'll make it for sunday school because sunday school is fantastic amen god bless you love you have a blessed night in jesus